Most people say, why would we have a tier two league? I don't care about tier two Dota. I don't want to watch it. Neither do I. As a tier two, tier three player, I know I suck. I know everybody around me sucks. Nobody wants to watch that shit unless somebody's betting on it. But that's where the tier one players come from. All right, so uh, we are about to do our podcast, but it looks like there has been a final knowledge drop, a, a release, press release, I guess, from Valve regarding the regional leagues that were teased on Liquipedia not too long ago, and everybody was speculating whether it was real or not. Apparently it is real. We are going back to three majors. You can see the trophies on your screen. I remember these trophies. I was there in Boston. The Valve Majors are back, it looks like. The DPC is changing. Shit's getting crazy. Let's get into it, Jenkins. We're going to talk about competitive Dota real quick and figure out what the hell is going on for this next season. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, if you've watched our channel since... I mean, geez, we've been talking about it since the inception of Dota Alchemy. I mean, even beyond that, I was, I was a proponent of this. They are... Finally, doing a league for Tier 2, and not only Tier 2, but Tier 3 teams as well. This is bananas. So, it's it's bananas. And the reason they're doing it, and the argument that I always had was, I, I suppose my argument is more a counter-argument to one of the popular counter-arguments to the claim that there should be Tier 2 leagues. Most people say, why would we have a Tier 2 league? I don't care about Tier 2 Dota, I don't want to watch it. Neither do I. As a Tier 2, Tier 3 player, I know I suck. I know everybody around me sucks. Nobody wants to watch that shit unless somebody's betting on it. But that's where the Tier 1 players come from. And people want to watch them. You have so, to develop talent. There's no other way to get a right, good exactly. competitive this, team. This is an investment. This money that's going in is an investment so Tier 2 players can develop so that they will eventually become Tier 1 players. And not all of them will develop to be Tier 1 players, but that's okay because you buy stocks, some of them fail, some of them make you a millionaire. You know, this is this is just basic investing, and that's, that's what I see this as. And I don't think Valve ever disagreed with that notion. I think there's been a lot of really good arguments for it. PPD, uh, for, for one, uh, had a, a very good write-up on a potential league system, and I think Valve... Uh, definitely took took note of that. At least the community did. So I don't think they disagreed with the idea behind it. It's just Valve is pretty hands off. But finally, they're stepping in. They're saying, "Okay, right, let's uh, we're it. going to let's read." Okay, it. Right. <laughs> sorry, I'm let's, freaking uh, out because I haven't read any of this yet. Okay, so. okay, okay. So starting after TI10, the Dota Pro Circuit will introduce a new system that presents competitive Dota in a much more scheduled and consistent way, which is good. Which means the viewership will be up. Uh, the year will be divided into three different seasons. Uh, each season will be composed of six leagues. Uh, and then each season is going to end with a major. And then the Dota year will end with the international. So uh, each of the six leagues will have $280,000 US per season. And when we scroll down, we'll see if that's per... Uh, if so each of the six leagues. Okay, so that is actually... That that that, that seems... Okay, I'm, am I crazy here? Six leagues, $280,000 per season? That that seems like a lot of money. That's six times two hundred eighty thousand times three for the year, right? That's that's one point six million per uh, season. per season per league, right? So it's in six leagues, so times six, right? Six million per is that, is per, that right per league? Well, I mean, okay, no, let's per, let's just for read the whole the, year for the whole year. Let's let's just read the rest of it. <laughs> okay. Leagues will feature two divisions with eight teams in the upper division and then eight in the lower division. So good teams and dog shit teams, tier two, tier three, uh, for a total of 96 teams participating across the world. That is an insane number. That's, that's an, I, how do we I, feel that, that is, many? How do we feel that many? I, I don't know, but it's exciting. Cause get your battle, get yeah. your battle cup let's practice go, in, boys. Let's do it. Who wants to play? <laughs> uh, after each season, the bottom two teams of the upper division will swap places with the top two of the lower division. Okay. So that's how you get into the upper division. You make top two of the lower season. Uh, the bottom two teams of the lower division, they're out. They're gone. And then two new teams come in from uh, the open qualifiers. So basically, there's going to be a bunch of invites. Man, I got to contact somebody from Valve. <laughs> I got to get invited to this. Uh, so there's going to be two invites. 
I'm sorry, two open qualifiers where you can get in and get in those bottom two slots, then everybody else will essentially stay. So a little bit more consistency. Oh and they say God. this in the next line. We believe. We believe yes. The consistency and regularity of the league throughout the year paired with the flat and deep prize pool distribution will, over time, nurture a healthy and strong tier two slash tier three competition, which I agree. Uh, the leagues will have a duration of six weeks and each region will consist of full best of three round robin among all teams. Uh, okay, so it's just a group round robin group stage essentially in order to make it easier to follow your favorite uh, region and teams. All matches will be consistent in date and time slots throughout the year for wow. each region, which is fantastic. So much structure. Holy that is really crap, good. crap, dude. You're going to be I, like, I, all right, I'm tuning in every Wednesday night to watch my NA boys play. Like, that's what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to yeah, schedule I, watching your favorite teams. And this makes so much sense considering, you know, we've, you know, we, we have the the Dota 2, sure, the player base is declining to, to a large degree, but the viewership is at an all-time high, right? The Dota is a viewer sport, a viewer esport at this yep. point, really. So it's really good to have that be consistent so people can make it a, a part of their lives Dude, uh, they, that's that's on like a schedule. They even all have upper, the schedule. They even have the schedule announced dude, this already. Next line, this next line is insane. All upper division matches will be presented from studio broadcasts. Wow. They're going to have studio broadcasts all year round. Dude. That is huge for casters. This isn't just a league that's this nurturing tier two, team. tier three talent. For players, it's for casters too. The whole this scene is huge is for benefit. casters. Yeah, I'm I'm so stoked about this. If you're a tier, if the... you're a tier one caster, you now legitimately have a real job. Like you you can have a real job if you're part of this. You can make a full year time salary because even for tier one casters right now, it's so feast or famine. You get like five events in a row. You make like your entire year's worth of salary in like you know three months. And then you just have no work for the rest of the time. And you're just like, what am I supposed to do with my time? Now it's like you are working consistently. You're going to have to show up. You're going to have to do pr consistently good jobs, but you're going to have the resources, hopefully to make this all happen in like a super professional, really well presented way. Yeah, this is, this is very, very exciting. So each region will have three competition days a week. Schedule will be as follows. Uh, all times in PST, each slot represents a best of three series. So we have the schedule. There's basically Dota going on at all times. Oh, my God. For each day. We have China, China, Europe, Dude. Europe. Uh, NA is on. So I'm not entirely sure if these time zones are. Uh, what, what, what all times time in PST, zones? it says. Yeah, okay, okay. I see. I see. Uh, so NA. So, okay. So they have the so they have each individual uh, region playing in the appropriate time slot for mm -hmm. that region, which, which of course uh, makes sense, but there's Dota going on basically constantly, which is very cool yep. for lower and upper, uh, which is, which is very exciting. There appears to be more lower than upper. Am I right about that? I'll have to go down and see the, the uh, upper, <clears throat> upper and lower division. I think it's because for the NA, for some of the regions, there's less slots in the lower division, but we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, okay, for there's five there's five European five European in both from what I can tell. I think okay, it, I think uh, it's just spread out on different days because they don't want right. it to overlap with uh, the lower. So like CIS lower is not going to play on the same days as CIS upper. Yeah, for the inaugural season, Valve will allocate the initial teams to the upper and lower divisions. Teams will also have to declare the region they choose to participate in and uh, be eligible for that region before the season starts. Okay, that that's fair. Uh, remaining slots will be filled through the qualifiers after international 2020 concludes. All right, let's check out this prize distribution. So from first place in the upper division, you get 30,000 USD, 500 DPC points, and you qualify to the major playoffs. You don't have to play group stages at the major. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a huge win for the first place. Really? Team. This means this is how they're going to make it. So you really have to try in every single match, right? Because with some of these leagues, it's very easy to like take a couple days off because it is kind of a grind. But um, not every match would matter, you know. Back in the day, for like Dream League seasons or something, if you're a high ranked team, you're just going to get invited to the tournament anyway. This is like, dude, you the, actually skip the group stage if you're number one. And look at the amount of money you make. It's actually insane. The amount of every single team in the upper division gets like twenty two to thirty thousand dollars. Like the difference between second and first place isn't that much in terms in terms of money yeah it's uh, which very I, flat which, very flat for the opportunity which is crazy because geez 
you know, the, the teams that I've personally played on have been seventh, eighth place teams in mm-hmm. terms of the whole region uh, when at, at best. And $23,000 with the people that I was playing with, that's a lot of money for tier two players, man. That's a lot of money. That's, that's rent for the, for the season. That's rent for like, depending on what you're paying, that's rent for a year. So people can actually afford to, to do this. Obviously I'm saying 23,000 divided by, you know, divided Five, by the number of players. Yeah, coach. Yeah. <laughs> that's still rent. That's still rent depending, depending on where you live in NA, uh, you know, where I live, that, that would definitely be. It'll certainly help rent. at the very least. Yes. Um, it's, it's very cool. It is important to note that six places and down, you don't get any DPC points. So those are, I would assume qualify tw- qualification points f- towards TI. Um, and if you're bottom two, you get relegated to the lower division. Now, moving on to the lower division, first place, 17K, promoted to the upper division. Second place, 16K, promoted to the upper division. And that scales 15, 11, 9, 7. Seventh and eighth place, you get no money. How do you feel about that? That seems a little bit harsh to me because you're playing an entire uh, season and you make well, no money. That's- yeah, but you are getting you are getting knocked out. So yeah. I understand that, but you also are, hypothetically, you're going to be, you know... A I product, think it's okay. a product for broadcast. You're going to be a product for. It is lower division. We don't know. Like, I assume you know if we have. All right, so you have eight places. We have eight places. So sixteen total teams. The sixteenth best team in NA. Should they make money from playing Dota? It's, it's a, it's a reason to watch. It's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's big if somebody gets eliminated it's you know true. what i mean it's gonna like suck though it's gonna really it is suck but there has to be the, ne- the negativity there has to be the positivity we need to have the whole spectrum to have it be exciting and this to me seems really exciting even if it's like a bit extreme compared to all of these teams that are winning thousands of dollars i i do like the fact that it's going to be exciting yeah for a team to be eligible to participate in a region three or more of the players this is kind of important stuff because we've had teams swapping divisions and swapping regions so for a team to be eligible to participate in a region, three or more of the players need to reside in the area they're competing in. Additionally, teams will be able to use a stand-in for up to four of their matches as long as the stand-in is either competing in a lower division or not competing in the league at all. If a team decides to change regions, they will have to enter the region through open qualifiers and climb through the region's lower division. So if you want to switch regions, you can, but you have to go through opens, you have to climb through lowers that's, for an entire season, and then you can go up to the next one. That's a pretty. That's a pretty big... It's a big, Ask, yeah, it I is think. a big deal. It's a lot of time that you have to invest not being able to go to majors and stuff. Um, for the duration of each season from the beginning of the league until the end of the major, all rosters will be locked. After the major concludes and until the beginning of the next season, roster changes will be possible. Each player change will incur a 15% penalty on current points for that team. So let's move on to the majors. The season will conclude with a major tournament featuring 18 teams from all regions and sporting a prize pool of 500,000 USD plus DPC points. The 18 participating teams are the top spots from each regional upper division. Regions will have a fixed amount of slots throughout the year. Europe, they're already announcing it. Europe and China will have four slots each. North America and Southeast Asia will have three slots each. CIS mm. and South America will have two slots. That's, is that crazy to you that they're already announcing this? Or do you think that's okay? Uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, I feel like having it be a question every time is... Uh... Um, Fair enough. Kind of, it, yeah. It's it's a little unreasonable. And I, I the thing is, these these regionals, it's going to be so punishing to switch regions and to switch teams and things like that. That I think we're going to see a lot more consistency with with the teams. I, so I guess my only question is the North America getting three slots. Like I think that they have teams that can fill three of like the potential, you know, best sixteen teams. But at the same time, you are saying like CIS, which is arguably the biggest population outside of china for a region is only getting two slots which is kind of nuts to me sure that's that's a fair argument maybe ci should should get three because it is just you know there's no minors or anything so so i mean i don't know uh i suppose it's kind of like you know europe is it gets four slots and cis is like close to europe so I mean, <laughs> I guess South America is close to North America as well. I don't know where you're going with that, but I don't know. I'm yeah. just saying, like they could, you know, they could move, they can move and join like a European team, for I example. Suppose. I suppose. Whereas, like you know, it would be hard for for North American to to join a European team like that. You know, it's expen- really expensive. I suppose so. All right, take it away with the majors format. Okay. Uh, wait, where the hell is that? 
<laughs> wild oh major format wild card format six teams best of two round robin uh top two teams advance to the group stage so okay just just a group stage interesting so uh okay cool so six teams from all of the regions i think one team oh no two from china two from europe one from na one from sea so sa and cis don't even get a slot in the wild card which is which is interesting that is interesting uh okay uh, format of the group stage is eight teams, best of two, round robin, top two teams advance to the playoffs of the upper bracket, and the third and sixth place advance to the playoffs of the lower bracket, uh, two teams get eliminated, which I think is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. uh, and then playoffs is just 12 teams double elimination, which is also standard. And then the prize distribution is 200k for first place through 12k for eighth place, and remember you also get a prize for the league as well. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that's not it's not uh counted already is it no it's not it's not so yeah so you're just getting a bit of bit of extra money on top of whatever you win at the major okay so if i'm let's see in the playoffs because there's 12 teams in a double elimination bracket so the bottom four teams make no money is that correct i guess uh they get knocked out yeah they would they would make oh wait 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 uh 12 teams because the playoffs uh, oh you're right you're right yeah the bottom four would, would make no money they just didn't. They just didn't include it on here. But you make you make money from the qualifiers from getting there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no open qualifiers to TI now. So it's straight up. You're playing in the leagues. That's the only way to get to TI. Wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. Okay. So. So no invites. Nothing like that. And basically, what they're saying is that um, we don't want to have to deal with this whole open qualifier thing. We don't want you guys to be forming stacks like at the last second to play and opens and, and try and make it into regional qualifiers. Like if you want to be part of the Dota ecosystem, you need to formulate a team and you need to play with them. You need to get, give to it. You need to contribute to it. Yep. If you want to get back from it, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. I think that's reasonable. It's, it seems like this is going to be, this is something nuts. that's just very sustainable. I, I, maybe the numbers need to be dialed down a bit. Um, maybe they're not high enough, which would be really cool, but I think this will be something that's eventually quite sustainable and really good for Dota as well. This is crazy. I mean, they even have announced the dates of the majors already. This is like way more communication from Valve than we've ever had before. So the dates for each each season are as follows for the upcoming year after TI-10, obviously. Season 1 Fall League will be from October 5th to November 15th, with the major going from December 7th until the 19th. So awesome. Winter League will be from... January 4th to February 14th, and the major will happen from March 8th until March 20th. Spring League will be from April 12th to May 23rd, and the major will be from June 21st to July 3rd, which allows for TI to happen in August, which is when it usually does. And let's see, if we think about that, um, you will be getting from December 19th until January 4th. So you get like a two week break over Christmas. That's nice for a large part of the population um, i don't celebrate christmas donnie then from march just, just frost of us <laughs> march until april you'll get um again like a two-week break a little bit more than two weeks and then july 3rd will be the end and they usually have it in like first week of august so almost a full month off after the end of season three so that's a lot to take in i'm gonna have to read through this again what do you think jenkins initial thoughts are you excited are you gonna? Are you coming so back to competitive Dota? Are you gonna? <laughs> so excited! I'm really thinking about it. I'm really genuinely thinking about it. With this, this, this seems like it could be a lot of fun. Are we making a Dota Alchemy stack? Are we doing it? Hell yeah! Are Let's go. Up? <laughs> Let's go. Make some cash. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so that's that's the regional leagues. That is that's the new DPC system. Um, let but, us know what you yeah, think. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is this stupid? Is it sustainable? Do you think this is a last ditch effort from Valve to save the game? Or is the game back? Are we going to grow? We might grow. It could happen. This is how League grew. This is how League continues to grow. They put out a lot of content about their game. So is this the answer? 